Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of Harvard University has looked into physical exercise as we age and its connection to aging well. Things such as how to fend off the diseases of aging. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this latest study out of Harvard University has got to offer. This is a review of a study out of the Harvard University that was penned by Connor Feely, where he discusses a newly published paper where researchers argue we aren't meant to reduce our physical activity at all as we age. And there are links in the description below to the study and articles I used to put this presentation together. In the modern Western world, people tend to reduce their levels of physical activity as they get older. But with this inactivity comes a raft of adverse health effects. So. Why didn't evolution engineer us in a way that allows people to maintain a decent quality of life as they inevitably slow down, in effect, a longer health span? In a new paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers argue it's because we aren't meant to reduce our physical activity at all as we age. And as a result, the active grandparent hypothesis was born. Researchers have started to uncover the beneficial processes that physical activity helps to promote, such as maintaining a lower blood pressure and reducing systemic inflammation. But it remains unclear why these mechanisms cease to operate to the same degree in the absence of physical activity, especially in older people who rely on them to maintain their health and their quality of life. In the paper, lead author Daniel E. Lieberman of the Harvard University adopts an evolutionary approach where he draws on previous biomedical findings to explain why physical activity reduces illness and injury and more importantly, extends longevity. In the past, evolutionary biologists have tended to argue that since only recent human generations have been able to put up their feet in the twilight years, evolution just hasn't had the same amount of time to catch up. This might explain why we should take note of our ancestral habits and stay physically active as we age, but it doesn't tell us why our ancestors managed to stay active for so many of their retirement years. In laying out the evolutionary explanations, the authors break down some of the assumptions we have about ancient humans. Let's see what they are. The authors of the paper stated that contrary to the widespread belief that human lifespans until recently were short, hunter-gatherers who survive infancy and childhood tend to live an average seven decades, approximately 20 years past the age at which they cease reproducing. And fossil evidence indicates that extended human lifespans were common by 40,000 years ago. Older individuals in social groups were not only selected by evolution for longevity because they could impart important knowledge and skills, but because they could still also physically forage and contribute to the family's food supplies, especially for the children and for the grandchildren. The authors also noted that while the number of daily steps older Americans take decreases by about half between the ages of 40 and 70, daily walking distances among hunter-gatherers, such as the Hasda, decline only modestly with age. In debunking the myths that human beings in prehistory lived short lifespans and were relatively sedentary, the authors suggest that it may have been the allocation of resources to physical activity over other biological processes that could in fact have helped to prevent certain health issues from arising in the first place. Under conditions where energy needs were typically met or exceeded, physical activity meant potential harmful excess energy wasn't allocated to fat or reproductive tissues, whereas nowadays a large amount of data clearly demonstrates the negative health impacts of excessive fat storage. An additional hypothesis put forward by the authors suggests that regular physical activity meant energy resources could also be allocated to the repair and maintenance of tissues and cells that degrade with physical activity and as a result, come back stronger. 
This includes the repairing of tears in muscle fibres, restoring cartilage damage, healing microfractures, as well as the releasing of exercise-related antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. Without physical activity, these responses were blunted. Many, many studies over the years have put forth recommended suitable durations for exercise anywhere from around half an hour a day of moderate exercise to around an hour of intense effort every week. And all this choice can be and is very confusing. Without exercise, we run a far greater risk of developing a range of age-related diseases, including cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, and a number of cancers in later life. However, despite this wisdom, physical activity levels around the world are generally decreasing as a result of technologies that have replaced human labor, such as motor and electrical vehicles, agricultural equipment, and autonomous machinery. The lack of compensation for this reduction in energy requirement has without doubt resulted in a growing number of health-related issues among the elderly, and more ominously of late, the middle-aged too. Dr. Daniel E. Lieberman, Professor of Human Evolutionary Biology at Harvard University said, the key take-home point is that because we evolved to be active throughout our lives, our bodies need physical activity to age well. In the past, daily physical activity was necessary in order to survive. But today, we have to choose to exercise, that is, do voluntary physical activity for the sake of health and fitness. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes which I shall refer to because I think this is a very important topic. The study mentions a number of times the elderly, uh, but the elderly are getting younger. What do I mean by that? Well, the age at which age-related diseases used to manifest themselves used to be mid to late 60s. More and more commonly now, these diseases are, be are being seen in people in their late 40s and even in their 50s. And I think as a species, this is an extremely ominous sign. A poor diet containing too much processed food is without a shadow of doubt very much to blame. That said, the downward trend in mobility across the board also has a significant part to play. I think age is a factor and the sooner you can start a whole food diet, not necessarily plant-based, but reducing processed foods as much as possible, then the better it is for you. And if you're planning to start your longevity journey tomorrow, then in my humble opinion, you're already starting a day too late. Uh, I started far too late um, and I'm hoping that I can catch up. Uh, what I would say is try to eat healthily, try to exercise regularly and try to make that a habit. Start small and build gradually. But the most important thing is that you must actually start. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.